financial quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group, and he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. Now, let's kick off your Message financial you future. Here's Josh Jelinski. Hi, everybody. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, and we have... Special guest, best-selling author, James Lang, investment advisor, CPA, president of Lang Financial Group. He is a nationally recognized IRA. Folks, I mean, most of your money, if you have any, if you're lucky to have any, is in your IRA or 401k or retirement plan. He's a retirement plan distribution expert and author of numerous books including the IRA and Retirement Plan Owner's Guide to Beating the Death Tax, Six Proven Strategies to Protect Your Money from the Secure Act. I don't know about you, but the Secure Act made me feel less secure. Most people, it's a good rule of thumb whenever there is a tax bill, the, in, the name is always the opposite of the result. So the SECURE Act made people less secure. So we are now joined on the YouTube. Man, this guy looks great on the YouTube. James Lang, how are you? Describe, if you were a Marvel comic book character, describe your origin story. Go ahead. I'd say it was a little bit like Mr. Magoo in that there was no master plan Um Became a CPA relatively early in life. Uh, against my dad's advice, went to law school and then became a financial advisor to be able to, um, let's say, serve more people, have a greater scope, and to be very honest, to make more money. Yeah. So, and, so when you told and, your dad, real quick, always, when you told your dad you were going to be going to law school, was it like, Somewhat of like, hey, Dad, I'm going to be a used car salesman. No offense to your used car salesman. Well, it wasn't quite that bad. He was an attorney himself. He just didn't think, and I think for a lot of people he, he was right, that it wasn't a great career choice because the, the market is glutted with attorneys and it's expensive, etc. On the other hand, combined with being a CPA and a financial advisor, I thought it would be a, uh, a good opportunity and again, back then, I was just a CPA, not a financial advisor. But I think the three work very well together. Yeah, so you're a CPA, a lawyer, and a financial advisor. We're going to uh, take questions from the audience. Um, we'll get more to your origin story, and then we'll take some questions. We have some questions like, how can I optimize the earnings of my children? How should I handle an inherited IRA? We'll get to all of those, but first let's continue James Lang's origin story. So financial advisor, attorney, CPA, uh, what else do you do? <laughs> and in no, all I, I write. I, I, I enjoy writing. I think it is a, um, a good thing for me to get some of my thoughts and ideas out. I find the literature, particularly when – the underlying asset is an IRA, 401k, 403b, step keo. There's a lot of misunderstandings. There's a lot of things that consumers can do to enhance their, their families and even their charities' um, benefit. Oh, wonderful. So we're going to go right. We have a bunch of questions. Folks, if you have a question, you can join us on the Clubhouse app. Follow me at your financial QB. Also, call us, 800-321-0710 is our listener call in line. Or you can type in the YouTube chat box where we have Jim monitoring YouTube as well as our faithful intern, Benjamin Martin, not to be confused with the character from The Patriot. So uh, go ahead. So uh, we got Veronica. Man, Veronica is, is keeping the questions coming. So Veronica has a question. Uh, Veronica, uh, would you like to verbalize your first question? Go ahead, Veronica. Can we hear you, Veronica? Okay, well, I can't hear Veronica. Oh, go ahead, Veronica. 
I can't hear Veronica. Okay. Veronica, go ahead. Okay, well, I can't hear her, but what I'll do is I will verbalize the question. How can I optimize okay. earnings for my kids, for my children? As a, well, she's a realtor. All right, well, the, the best thing that you can do for your children is to get them into a favorable tax environment as early as possible. Uh, and the best way to do that, frankly, would be a Roth IRA. So you said you're a realtor. I don't know how old your children are, but let's assume that they might be old enough to do some work for you. you and by the way, legitimate the work, not a scam, whether they help you with uh, software or you know computers or um, even helping doing whatever they're, they do, and you pay them. And then based on the earnings that you pay them, you make a Roth IRA contribution for them, and that money will grow income tax-free for the rest of their lives and potentially the rest of their spouse's lives. So, you know, if they're 15 years old or something like that, you might four. get a, a huge number of years of tax-free growth. Maybe he already did it. Okay, great. So uh, she says her kids are 11. So if she's a realtor, maybe my, my estimation is have her kids be featured on her ads, on her advertising, pay them as models, right? I mean, it has to be somewhat legitimate here, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> you're tired, Josh. I kind of like that. Uh, you have to have them do something. I actually, I'm not going to get on public radio and, and tell people, oh, you should do this tax scam, but... Uh, if they do do some legitimate work and you pay them, um, and may, maybe it is very worthwhile to have them do some kind of work and pay them, get the money in a Roth IRA, and, and probably for the benefit of most of our listeners, whose kids might be a little bit older, might have a summer job, or might even be early in their careers, you know, one of the ideas of a leveraged gift is to get some money into your children's name in a tax-free manner, and a Roth IRA is the perfect avenue for that. No, I love it. Uh, we're we're go giving some great tips with the author of the IRA and Retirement Plan Owner's Guide to Beating the New Death Tax, Six Proven Strategies to Protect Your Money from the Secure Act. We're going to talk about the Secure Act because with COVID, People kind of forgot about the implications of the SECURE Act and how it kind of screwed up a lot of things. It made someone neither more secure nor a lot of things. So, Veronica, I think we got your audio working. Uh, next financial question. Go ahead. I have a question as well, if you don't mind. Okay. Amelia, uh, we will go to your question next. First, Veronica. All right. Okay. So, how can I better help my CPA do a better job for me? <laughs> uh, the, the best thing that, that most people can do when they are working with a CPA, and so Veronica, you, you're a realtor, so you have, and I don't know if you get a W-2 or if you get a 1099, but let's assume 1099. for discussion's sake. That, wait, I, I didn't hear that. Is it 1099, 1099 or W-2? All right, so a 1099, you're reporting your income, assuming you're not incorporated on a Schedule C, and depending on how... Uh, specific you are with your information that you give to your CPA, if you give him a, a schedule of all your income and all your expenses, that's going to make his life a lot easier than if you give him a bunch, bunch jar of, or a box of receipts, etc. So what I would say is, uh, and I don't do them anymore, but I used to do a lot of tax returns, is the better organized the client is, the better use of the CPA is making up his time, the lower your your fee will be for tax preparation. And in addition, it gives the CPA some scope and some time to potentially help you uh, save money on taxes and allow the CPA to be a strategist. So for example, he might say, well, gee, Veronica, you might be able to put more money into a one-person 401k plan 
than you could with, say, for example, a SVP, or you might be able to do a Roth IRA conversion favorably, or whatever the tax issue might be, if he's spending all his time just being a mechanic or a historian, he's not going to give you as much value as if he is spending less time as a mechanic and a historian and more time as a strategist. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Okay, next up, we're going to go to Emilion with a question for James Lang, author of the book, The IRA and Retirement Plan Owner's Guide to Beating the New Death Tax. And if you want a copy of the book, you can call us at 888-988-JOSH for free. That's 888-988-5674. Or Jim even set up a website for our team at paytaxeslater.com slash WOR. So go ahead, Emilian. Okay, so James, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. My question is a little more broad-based. Um, I'm curious to know what was the financial picture globally or in the United States when you entered the industry and how it is now and what are the changes that have taken place and what does that imply for us? Well, of course, we can't control the market. And one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, when you, and, you know, we read about and we listen to experts on the safe withdrawal rate. And the important thing to keep in mind in terms of timing, if you will, is, and I'm not a believer in timing, is, but the important thing to know is that uh, when the market is up and down relative to your career is important for your long-term financial security. So, for example, the worst time to have a downturn in the market is after you retire, and let's say that you need to take money from your portfolio, the market's down, you have to take money from your portfolio, although I'm sure Josh is going to uh, set people up as, as we would to have some safe money. Uh, you know, it's, it's said that a bear market is a young worker's best friend because the market will go up uh, over time. So I, I, I don't want to get into terribly specific uh, descriptions of markets because, very frankly, it's not even clear that we know what happened before and why it happened because of the environment, let alone what's going to happen in the future. I tend to try to concentrate on things that you can control, which tends to be reduction in taxes rather than attempting to time the market. And that's a great financial tip. Try to focus on what you can control, not what you can't. So we're going to go to a short break, and when we return, we'll be back with Jim Lang. And if you want his book, call us, 888-988-JOSH. We'll give it to you free when you schedule and keep your no-obligation review. That's 888-988-JOSH, or he's been uh, so cool to set up his own little website for us, paytaxeslater.com slash W-O-R. And we have a lot to talk about with Jim. We're just getting started. We'll be back after these messages. It's always on your mind. Retirement, whether you're 55 or 35. Not everyone Thank you wants so to much, work for Josh. That was awesome. Most would like a comfortable retirement. You may already yeah, it's a lot have a plan, of fun to do but these. is it the right one? So we're doing the Josh live radio Jelinski, show, live YouTube, financial live clubhouse. Radio program, is ready to we're going everywhere. Financial freedom. He challenges I love it. the ways I'm your parents and grandparents too, saved money you. with fresh strategies, which are exactly what you need hey, to navigate Tammy. today's volatile Wanna economic up? climate. Hey, Tammy. Want to come up? Josh's new out book, of Retirement Charlotte, Reality New, Check, North is available Carolina. to order on Amazon. It's an easy read that guides you through his system so, for securing your financial freedom, correctly? including tax saving strategies, understanding well, the right investment mix, and more. Order now. Retirement Reality Check. Call Josh at 888-988-JOSH. Let Josh help you, you map question, out your Emilia? retirement using well, yeah, fresh I'm strategies. A Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Hey. 
Meet you out on the w first page? Yeah, I'll be right there. Just reading this article. So we'll on be what? back in, I don't Bill know, Bill Condon's past. Looks like it's going to affect the value of all retirement. So this is a live radio show. My financial guy didn't tell me about New York saw him the other day. Flagship well, station. And WOR, one of the biggest stations in the Josh country. Jolinsky. Josh Jolinsky is and your guy. A buddy of mine said, well, why don't you just broadcast it on Clubhouse, which I am. too. Josh will give so. you a free economic why plan, not? which includes retirement planning, a 27-point checklist to make sure your income lasts as long as you live. I love it. Hey, Victor, come on up. Live. He'll even help you navigate the current tax code. And then share the room. I'm room. Call Josh. Cool. But and then people get to ask any questions. Josh and Jelinski, Veronica is helping me moderate. Financial quarterback radio program um, it's not like popcorn like some clubhouse rooms. It'll be a little bit more structured. Uh, send your questions to Veronica, and then she'll tell me and I can go to you. Okay, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Call us at 888-988-JOSH. Jim Lang is, if, if you haven't heard of him, he's one of the best authors in the IRA distribution space, I would say second only to Ed Slot. No offense, Jim. But uh, I put you in very good company. You're a great writer, and uh, you, you give a lot of valuable information that we're going to get to. So if you have questions, folks, chime in 800-321-0710. You can get his book by calling us at 888-988-JOSH. For free, call us 888-988-JOSH. Schedule your no-obligation 45-minute wealth strategy session, or you can go to his website, paytaxeslater.com slash WOR. What a great guy. Set up his own website for a, for a web page. So in your new book, Beating the New Death Tax, you talk about how the SECURE Act is so devastating to IRA and retirement plan owners. Can you talk about those dangers a bit? Well, I, I really hate the SECURE Act, as I'm sure you do, Josh. And as you have uh, notably pointed out, uh, sometimes the name of the act does the exact opposite. And I would call it the Mass Income Tax Acceleration on Your Heirs Act, because that's the essential part of what the act did. Yes, they changed the minimum required distribution from 70 and a half to 72 and a few other minor helpful things. Um, but where, where they really are clobbering uh, the hardworking family man, uh, the person who has worked uh, the vast majority of their adult lives. And we have been told all along, if you put money in your IRA, your 401k, your 403b, your SEP, KEO, et cetera, we will not only give you favorable tax treatment during your lifetime, but we will also give your heirs, that is typically maybe even after your spouse passes, but to your, let's say, children and grandchildren, we, would, we will give them a favorable tax treatment and allow them to, we used to call it the stretch IRA, meaning that they could take small distributions, ever increasing as they age, but small distributions over their entire lifetime. With the SECURE Act, uh, the beneficiary of the IRA, subject to some exceptions, must take the entire balance of the inherited IRA, distribute it within 10 years of the IRA owner's death, and then have to pay income taxes on that entire amount. And depending on the numbers and the assumptions you, you use, it can literally be the difference between, let's say you leave a million dollars to your to, your, to one child, it can be the difference between that child being broke later on in life and having well over a million dollars. So this is a very important and devastating tax act, and I am a big fan of being very proactive to do everything you can to reduce the impact of, of this horrendous law uh, for your own personal situation. Yeah. The Affordable Care Act made health care less affordable. The SECURE Act <laughs> makes people less secure. Not to get political. I mean, you know, the Affordable Care Act was under Obama. The SECURE Act was under Trump. So we are equal opportunity offenders here <laughs> on the financial quarterback. I just think people do not realize how bad it screwed them. I mean, back in the day, you could – Ostensibly, the IRA was like the middle-class trust. 
and you could just stay forever. And your, even though your kids would still pay tax on it with stretch distributions, they weren't eliminating taxes. That was the number one way for middle class people to accumulate 500,000, a million, two million. And you know what? Your kids aren't going to be destitute even if they don't do that well because they could take a distribution every year from the stretch. You know what? We have Paul Ryan to thank for it, Donald Trump, Congress, Senate. Um, I don't think people knew how bad it was for the regular person. I really don't. Like, nobody talked about how bad we got screwed by this deal. So if I ran for Congress or president or whatever, first thing I would do is repeal the strike. I think it was a horrible it, it was meant to be more revenue neutral. And you know what? I had start, I started discouraging people from using IRAs as an estate tax, as an estate vehicle to leave money to their heirs. I want to say in 2010 or 2012, we were reading the Green Book. If you remember the Green Books, uh, the Treasury Department comes up with ways to raise potential revenue. And Obama's Treasury Department said, uh, I think they floated this idea, and it ended up becoming live, you know, what, seven years later, <laughs> eight years later, six years later. So always read those green books, people, because they tell you what is on the mind of bureaucrats to take your money. What other things about the SECURE Act should our listeners uh, be made aware of? What, what other dangers are lurking in it? So you mentioned, and I've never heard this phrase, and I like it. I might use it with your permission. The in what is it? The income tax. Um, I like it. The income tax acceleration. Or what, what was your phrase? Yeah, the, the massive income tax acceleration act um, for your heirs, meaning that your heirs are going to have to pay income taxes on the entire on the entire inherited IRA within ten years of your death. Wonderful. And if you. And if you like, I'll expand on strategies, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait for a more specific question unless you want to throw out a general strategy Yeah, we'll question. go on some strategies, but I want to clear, clarify this topic a little bit. Let's say you work really hard, you save a lot of money. The Massive Income Tax Acceleration Act would say, if you pass your heirs a million dollars, when they, when you used to, if you were, when you used to be dead... <laughs> If you were dead prior to whatever, December 31st, 2018 or 2019, I forget. Uh, well, actually, the effective date is December 1, I'm sorry, is January 1, 2020. Okay, so, so if you died, if you died December, December 31st, 2019 or earlier, you could do this stretch, which means if you have a million dollars, you get a little bit each year. You don't avoid taxes. This isn't a tax loophole. You just had to take out, let's say, 40 or 50 grand every year, pay tax on that, and it was a nice way to leave your kids money, right? That would be a fair way to... It, it, yeah, it, it was actually a good thing, but now they've actually made it a bad thing. And the thing to me is and it's frustrating, and you talked about politics, um, it, there was an overwhelming, uh, on both sides of the aisle, voting for it. Now, it's not clear how many of the people who voted for it really understood it, but the implication to me that made it so um, unfair is that they changed the rules towards the end of the game for a lot of our clients and a lot of IRA owners who had relied on, okay, we were told if you put money in an IRA, 401k, 403b, SEPTO, et cetera, after we die, our heirs are going to get very favorable tax treatment. We relied on that. And then late in the game, sometimes even after we're retired, uh, the government says, hey, no, we decided we changed our mind. We want taxes on all that money within 10 years after your death. And I just really think that it's not a, a straightforward way to uh, work with taxpayers. And I'm very motivated to take every single strategy that we can to avoid this terrible problem for IRA owners and their families. We're going to go to some questions from the audience again. So folks, call us at 
321-0710 if you have a question. And we're going to talk about strategies to potentially mitigate the mites, massive income tax acceleration or mite tax. You got to make it sound like a mite, like a, like a dust mite that's going to infect you with taxation, the new SECURE Act. So we're going to go to some more questions. Uh, but first, give us one good strategy to counteract the bad in the MITE Act. Uh, go ahead. Well, I think the conceptually what we want to do is not die with a huge IRA. And tip one number one, tip number one from Jim Lang. You've heard it here first. Do not die. That's tip number one. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, don't die with a big uh, IRA. And one of the very interesting strategies is over a period of time to go from the taxable environment to the tax-free environment. So the Roth IRA conversions are one very obvious way of going from taxable to tax-free. But the other ways that might be considered, and it was uh, a, a question that we started right off the radio show with, is does it make some sense to take some of your money, even if you have to take some money out of your IRA, pay taxes on it, and then gift it to your heirs and have them invested in tax-free, for example, a Roth IRA for your child, a 529 plan for your child, uh, life insurance premiums where the death benefit is tax-free to your child or children. These are all some methods of getting around or at least reducing the horrible impact of the SECURE Act. Big picture, going from taxable environment, IRA, 401k, 403, et cetera, to non-taxable Roth IRA, 529 plan, um, oh, HSAs also, health savings accounts, um, and life insurance. Wonderful. So we're going to be back, and I want you to break down each one of these tax-free solutions. We'll also go back to the audience. Veronica has a question on everybody's mind, which is, if I add a logo on all of my business suits and shoes, can I write that off? We'll talk about that up next. When we return, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback with Jim Lang, best-selling author, Get his books on Amazon, wherever books are sold, or get them free by calling and scheduling your no-obligation 45-minute wealth strategy session with yours truly at 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-5674. Many of you are worried about your money uh, due to Ukraine, due to Russia, due to things you can't control. Today, we're focusing on that in the next hour but right now, we're focusing on what you can control, which is where you put your money in a tax-efficient manner. So up next, we'll be back with questions for Jim Lang. And he was so generous to open up a free website resource called, great website, paytaxeslater.com slash WOR, paytaxeslater.com slash WOR. And give us a call during the break, 888-988-JOSH, for the free book as well, 888-988-5674. We'll be back after these messages. Are you worried about the recent coronavirus crisis and how it may have affected your money? Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, inviting you to join me for my okay. complimentary six Folks ways joining to us on Clubhouse during your turbulent Mark Jim Lang webinar. We if are you answering your questions anything, live on your, your no biggest day in talk radio today. station, WOR. Josh, it's a it great goes thing to do. In, you know, if you're stuck plus at home states, under stay at home orders, we're on iHeartRadio right app, Spotify, 988 Josh. If you're bored, there's never been a better time to get in the second, second hour on your wealth than right now. A. M. Eight 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 eight
with Jim Lang. So Veronica has a question on business suits. Go ahead, Veronica. Veronica, you can unmute. Yes, I um, wanted to know, like, if I were to add a logo on all my business suits or uh, heels some way, somehow, can I write those off at the end of the year? Well, first, Veronica, I like your spirit. You have what a law professor of mine used to call larceny of the heart, which is trying to squeeze the last drop out of the tax code. Um, your, your question, can I add a logo and then deduct it, that sounds uh, a little bit aggressive to me. Uh, I can't give you a definitive answer, and maybe that's my own ignorance, or maybe there isn't a definitive answer to give. I do know that there are some professions and some people. Um, I remember there was a famous speaker who used to get special suits, and he said that they were only for speaking, and he did deduct them, so it's not like nobody has done anything like that, whether adding a, a logo um, would be sufficient and would that be you know a logo that <laughs> is plastered all over the clothes or is it just a tiny little logo that somebody can't even see uh, of course it goes back to is it a necessary and ordinary expense for your business so i'm going to give you uh not clear sounds a little aggressive but I love your spirit. I did. Uh, hey, Jim, I'm not a CPA. I'm not giving tax advice. But I did ask an accountant that very same question. So Veronica is a woman after my own heart. The answer was it has to be like a suit that you would require everyone to wear, like a uniform. So you could have all of the ladies or gentlemen wear a particular business suit from a particular vendor in a particular color, and if it is a uniform, then it would be deemed a write-off. But but then you can't, like, divert from the uniform. So think uh, flight attendants in those, uh, you know, if you ever have the certain, I don't know, I want to say, like, like the Emirates or, you know, where they wear, like, really sharp, business suits you could probably do something like that with a logo um i'm not giving tax advice but that was the answer i got but it, it has to be i i asked that very same question with my suits so i think we're, we're going to make everybody at my company i can't do it yet jim you're doing it jim is shaking my, i have a gym too jim jim minutella is our office manager why are you shaking your head no you would look great in a suit you're wearing like a flannel today. You look like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I wear what I'm, what I'm comfortable in. Okay, well, we'll get really comfortable suits. Like in, um, you know, Kramer in that Seinfeld gabardine, a thin layer of gabardine. Anyway, uh, you, you, could, you could really do well here. So we're taking your questions on all matters financial. And Veronica, we are going to talk more about the solutions to the SECURE Act. How to transition your money from forever taxed accounts to never taxed accounts. We'll also go to the phone lines at 800 321 0710. If you have a question live, 800 321 0710. So let's go back to the transition from forever taxed accounts to never taxed accounts. So the problem is if you have an IRA or 401k, they are great accumulation vehicles, ways to grow your money tax deferred from 20 to 72. But then when you're 72, you got to take all these tax dollars out, get clobbered with taxes. So how do you transition properly from forever taxed accounts to never taxed accounts? Like what is the how? And then we'll go more into the solutions, which you mentioned were you gave like the greatest one minute answer in the history of tax savings. You Mm -hmm. said, I think, health savings accounts, life insurance, Roths, Roth 401ks. You could do Roth 403B, Roth PSP, 
Uh, what did I miss on the other solution before we go to the how? Uh, you, by the way, very, very good. Uh, you, you missed 529 plans, oh, okay. which is a tax-free method of saving for the education, typically of your children or grandchildren. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of 529, so maybe that was like a Freudian slip. Uh, okay, fair enough. I think they're um, – you're right, though. That is a tax-free saving solution for college. A lot of people want to save for their kids' college. I just think that with the way the world's going, I think we'll be in like 60% tax bracket. But college will be free in 10 years. Maybe I'm overly naive, but, uh, you know, in certain states, I, I believe in, you can go in Tennessee and like, what is it, community college is free or four-year degrees free at a community college, stuff like that, and then Bernie Sanders and all these other places. Now you can go two-year uh, college free in most states. So I think four years will just be, you know, it'll be like an extension of high school. There'll be four more grades. <laughs> so, Jim, a uh, YouTube questioner has this question. What do I do with my 457 if I retire in my 50s? And then we'll go to the how, how one transitions from forever tax to never tax. But first, the question from our YouTube listener. And folks, just search for us on YouTube by searching The Financial Quarterback and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead, Jim. And so the, the, the question is, what is the best plan for a 457? And by the way, a 457 is a retirement plan. Um, typically in the public sector, maybe the uh, questioner uh, is a teacher, maybe a fireman, a policeman, uh, uh, some type of government worker. Uh, sometimes um, organizations will have a combination of, for example, a 403B plan and a 457 plan. And by the way, if, you're, if your organization or university or nonprofit offers that, um, you can sometimes double the amount of money that you are contributing to a retirement plan. All right, so the, the, the wait, wait, so how can you, is, real quick, slow that down. I'm a little slow. How, how can you double the amount in a retirement plan? Well, this is only if the um, employer offers this plan. So I'll just give you a very common example of, uh, that I run into all the time where employees don't even know that they have access to a 457 plan. And that's a lot of universities will have this plan and even a lot of public school teachers. Um, so I don't know what the New Jersey uh, public employee system is. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it's called PEACERS. Um, and uh, you can often um, take, they have a 403B, meaning you can contribute money to a retirement plan, have it go tax deferred, and then, then have to take it out and have all those miserable problems that we're talking about um, at 72 and then after you die. But then they also often have a 457 plan. Sometimes even the plan administrators don't know about it. It's kind of one of those secrets. Now, if the, if the organization doesn't have both plans, then you can't do it. And the majority of organizations will not. But if you, if you work for a university, if you work for a hospital, uh, some type of nonprofit organization or a government organization, it would behoove you to find out, assuming you can afford to make more contributions, um, to see if you are allowed to make a not only a 401 or 403B or 401A or whatever the code section that allows the normal retirement plan contribution, but also a 457 plan. And if you can afford it, that's, a, that's often a great thing to do. So basically, if you're a public um, educator, government employee, uh, troopers, police, uh, sometimes governmental employees, municipal employees, a 457 is what is afforded to you as an opportunity to save. So call us, 888-988-JOSH, if you need help with your 457, and you get the free book today by Jim Lang. And the, the full title, it, it is a mouthful, right, Jim? The IRA Owner, the IRA and Retirement Plan Owner's Guide to Beating the New Death Tax. Maybe didn't even realize there was a new death tax, but there is. 
six proven strategies to protect your family from this SECURE Act, which made you less secure. Jim has uh, been so gracious to offer free books to those of you who go to the website or call my office, paytaxeslater.com slash WOR or 888-988-JOSH. Give us a call, 888-988-5674. Operators are standing by live, and we'll be back with more of your questions for Jim Lang at 800 800- 321-0710, 800-321-0710. We'll be back after these messages. Josh Jolin, Steve Zeus, financial reporter back here. In these uncertain financial times, it is imperative that you guard your financial future. If you call within the next oh, so a question, three minutes, we will offer you our complimentary bear market survival guide. Veronica, steps to help your or you can message me, and I will go to those crisis. questions. The bear market we are with Jim Lang, best-selling author, be able to retire uh, amid world-renowned CPA, climate. investment we advisor, and legal expert points, on retirement plans. So call us your biggest asset is your 401k, so you should learn about it. For your bear market survival guide. Guy. Call the Josh Jelinski, host of the popular see, financial quarterback radio program. 888-988-JOSH. 888-988-JOSH. I don't see uh, his thing. It's okay. always on your mind. Retirement. Whether you're 55 or 35. Not everyone wants to work forever. And most would like a comfortable retirement. You may already have a plan. But so is folks, it the right live on the Josh Jelinski, host of the popular financial radio. quarterback radio program, is ready to guide you towards financial freedom. He challenges the ways your parents and grandparents saved money with Kevin fresh Scott, strategies, Jennifer, which are exactly what you need to navigate us. today's volatile economic climate. Josh's new book, Retirement Reality Check, is available to order on Amazon. It's an easy read that guides you through his system for securing your financial freedom, including tax saving strategies, understanding the right investment mix, and more. So order now. So you all know, Retirement we are Reality doing Check. My Call live Josh New York at 888 Josh. Let Josh help you map out your retirement Joel using Levin. fresh strategies. We'll Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. 10, and then 10 to 11, I address on the state of the market. So, folks, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, with special guest Jim Lang. So, how does one transition, Jim, from forever tax to never tax? And when we say forever tax, we really mean your tax deferred accounts. Uh, the largesse of most people's savings is in the IRA or 401k because your accountant says, hey, it's a great thing to put your money into. And it is to grow your wealth, but it is a poor distribution vehicle. Uh, first off, we're going to go to the phone lines and we have Dan and then we'll go to the how. Uh, Dan, go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. So. I have a question, okay? Uh, I uh, like to uh, uh, roll over from a 457 plan to an IRA. And I like to know if I didn't turn yet uh, 72, I'll be turning 72 later on this year, and I like to do it before that. And uh, with everything is going on uh, in the market, all this choppiness, uh, does it make a difference uh, at all if I do it now, uh, wait a little bit, or, or does it have any bearing at all? Go ahead, um, Jim. All right, so, okay, so as I understand the question is, what is the best time to go from a 457 to an IRA? And again, depending on um, what is in the 457 and what your investment choices are um, would, would to me be the most important factor of whether you should roll that into an IRA or not. Um, some 457 plans and other plans um, that certain organizations have, for example, uh, some organizations have a GIC, which is a guaranteed income contract, and sometimes uh, those rates uh, are relatively attractive for fixed income, it might make sense to keep that portion, at least, of your retirement plan that has maybe a good guaranteed uh, rate of return if that is available to you and maybe roll over other portions. Some plans are going to require you to either roll over the whole thing or nothing at all. 
Um, again, I'm going to be kind of uh, not give you a, a clear answer on when, because I think that that's a matter of timing. Now, if all you're talking about is going from one taxable environment to another, and the general rule, and this is an oversimplification, is that you can kind of roll any of these retirement plans into each other. In other words, you can go from a 401k to an IRA, from an IRA back to a 401k, which you might want to do if you want to do a backdoor Roth, um, or a 403b, uh, a step into an IRA, etc. cetera. Um, and what you want to be careful about when you are going from any, let's say, one environment to another, is that you preserve any tax benefits that might be in that environment. So obviously, for the traditional 401k, uh, et cetera, you want to make sure that you do what's called a trustee to trustee transfer, which is completely an income tax free event. Um, and then the other thing that you want to look for uh, that I always look for if you are going from one of these environments to an IRA is are there any after tax dollars inside that 401k? And two, do you have anything um, that would get favorable tax results? Um, and I'm forgetting the word right now, but um, it's employer stock um, with, that has favorable tax implications. So you Net have unrealized to, depreciation, that thing? You, you got it, Josh. Thank you. Uh, NUA, Net Unrealized Depreciation. So you, you always want to look for that. I don't have a magic bullet, though, as to, you know, when is the best time to go from one of those environments to an IRA. Wonderful. And Dan, uh, you can call us at 888-988-JOSH and we'll see if a rollover is right for you. You want to consider your age because in some cases your 457 is given special treatment where you can take withdrawals out uh, if you're under a certain age. That, that's probably the biggest problem. Uh, you want to consider fees. A benefit of doing an IRA rollover is freedom of choice in investing investment options which I like. So next, uh, we're going to go to the phone lines, and we have a ton of calls coming in. We're going to go to the phone lines, and we have oh, we have a ton of people. Paula, go ahead, Paula. You're on with Josh Chalinski, the financial quarterback, and Jim Lang, author of the best-selling book on how to beat the new death tax, the IRA, and Retirement Plan Owner's Guide to beating the new death tax, six proven strategies to protect your family from the SECURE Act. So give us a call. Get the free book, 888-988-JOSH. Uh, Go ahead. Bill. Go ahead. Hi. Good morning. Uh, Josh, uh, can I ask you such a question? I have stocks with, uh, let's say, Company A. They merged with Company B. In the process of merging, Company A sold my stocks. And they sent me a Form 1099-B. Should I consider the amount they um, uh, gave me um, for selling the stocks? The stock, uh, uh, like again, the stocks were bought originally from pre-taxed money. Go ahead, Jim. Well, all right. So what you what it sounds like what you described is that you were that you received a. 1099 for the distribution of an IRA or a retirement plan. And if you had taken that money out and distributed that money and spent the money, then the 1099 is basically. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. The stacks were not uh, in, uh, 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 it, it was just in the, uh, independent stacks. They were uh, sold from. Uh, from like uh, a reverse company merger? A to company B. I'm sorry, yes, because the two companies were merging, and the second company, the company B, didn't want my stocks, so, so company A sold it, and uh, they gave me the amount of money, uh, and the form uh, 1099-B, yeah, uh, uh, so this amount of money, should they, con uh, sh should they consider just like fully gain or but the stocks were originally bought like 20 years ago from my out of, uh, of pocket money from pre-tax money well you, you are going to have to report the 
the income, and it would presumably be on a Schedule D, which is gains and losses on uh, sales of, of SAW, because they're, they're going to treat it like a sale. But yes, you are right, and that is you can reduce the gain by the technical word is basis, which is basically how much money you paid for the stock originally, plus any uh, dividends that you might have received but didn't cash in, are uh, known as reinvested dividends. Um, so that would be, let's say, one way of slightly reducing the tax hit. But if it came down to it and uh, there was a stock sold and you got proceeds, then yes, that is reportable and you have to offset that um, or it's an opportunity to offset that uh, gain at least partially by your basis. Okay, so good question. I think you need an advisor. Uh, you need to do tax basis reconstruction. That's the key word. And we can help you with that. Uh, give us a call, 888-988-JOSH. Very complicated issue, but uh, cost basis reconstruction is the key word because you want to pay taxes that you don't need to pay. And you can't really avoid it because when the company did it, you know, you, you were not uh, a chairman of the board of the company. Um, you would have probably voted not to sell it, but they sold it. So, Paula, uh, we would love to have your, uh, you know, give us a call, 888-988-JOSH. Next up, we're going to Mark, converting a 401k to Roth. Go ahead, Mark. Hi, Jim. Uh, I'm 67 years old, uh, semi-retired. I have a set substantial amount of money in my 401k, a smaller amount in my Roth. Uh, I was thinking with converting over to the Roth as much as I'm in a, currently in a 24% tax bracket. I was thinking of converting as much as I could until I hit RMD age into the Roth and trying to keep me in the 24% tax bracket. Uh, what do you think of that strategy and would you have any other advice? Well, offhand, I like it. Uh, the, the important thing to think about when in Roth, doing Roth IRA conversions is what is your tax bracket now and what will your tax bracket be later? Now, if it's possible that your uh, tax bracket will go up even higher than 24%, maybe after you're 72, when maybe you and, and your wife are getting Social Security and you have a required minimum distribution. But let's just try to keep it simple. And let's assume that you're in the 24% bracket now, you'll be in the 24% bracket later, according to, base, to today's law. But understand this, the 24% bracket now uh, might very well end up being the 33% bracket, even with the same income, because of the sunset vision, the sunset provisions of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act of 2017, that basically say that even if Congress does nothing, the tax rates are going to go up substantially in the year 2026. But the other thing to consider is the, the basic strategy of making a conversion up to the top of your existing tax bracket is probably a very good starting point. Um, sometimes I go into a higher bracket if it's not much of a jump. So, for example, I would often recommend somebody the 22% bracket go to the 24% bracket. Now, here's some of the things that you have to be very careful of, right? So you said you're 67 years old, which means you're probably um, on Medicare and you are um, paying Medicare premiums, um, Medicare Part B, for example. Well, if you are making a series of Roth IRA conversions, what might happen is that might put you into a new bracket for Medicare Part B so while you're thinking that you're in the 24% bracket when you make a conversion, you might actually be in a higher bracket. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful. And there's other things, you know, that depending on your tax situation where a Roth IRA conversion can look like more money. Um, so, for example, you might trigger uh, investment income uh, tax, which is another 3.8%. A lot of people call that, you know, the Obama tax. Um, so it's not so simple, and uh, I don't think it's likely your situation from your description, but you actually might 
sometimes trigger additional tax on Social Security, which, by the way, I don't know if you remember, Josh, you had me on years ago when I was advocating the primary wage earner hold off until age 70 for Social Security. And that proved to be a really good piece of advice. Jim Lang, paytaxeslater.com slash WOR for the free book. Get his book, The IRA and Retirement Plan Owner's Guide to Beating the New Death Tax, Six Proven Strategies to Protect Your Family from the Secure Act. You can go to paytaxeslater.com slash WOR for for the free book or call our office at 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH. We'll be back with all of your financial questions in three minutes. And thank you, Tim, for joining us for great. One hundred years again, as the voice of New York. Fulton Lewis Jr. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. John Wingate reports. This is Lyle Vine. I'm Shelley Strickler reporting. Good morning, I'm Lou Adler. I'm Joe Bartlett. I'm 710 WOR. This is 710 WOR. An iHeart radio station. 27 degrees at 10 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Paul DeCastro with Russia mounting a full-on invasion of Ukraine. Many eyes are on the capital of Kiev, a key strategic point for the Russians. ABC's Ian Panel is on the ground in Ukraine's capital. Battles raging in parts of the city, but Ukrainian troops mounting a solid defense so far. Ukrainian President Zelensky this morning outside in central Kiev, vowing we will defend our country because our arms are our truth. Our truth is that it's our land, and we will defend all of this. A senior Pentagon official telling ABC News the first two days have not gone as well as the Russians expected. Well, several New York landmarks, including the Empire State Building, are being illuminated in blue and yellow, the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Governor Kathy Hochul said Friday that it's a show of solidarity for the people of Ukraine. The NYPD says an East Harlem woman was found dead in a plastic storage container in the Bronx Friday afternoon. Cops discovered the body just before 2 o'clock on University Avenue, just a few blocks away from Yankee Stadium. The victim, 35-year-old Nisa Walcott, was found unconscious and unresponsive in the container across the street from a storage facility. Neighbors like Dee Dee told Channel 7 it's even more concerning that it was a woman's body Your that was found. It was a woman found decomposed. I am a woman, a single black woman at that. And I have children. This is crazy. No word yet on the cause of We're death. The investigation on ongoing. Elective AM surgery restrictions station, in New York because the of the pandemic are being lifted. Those procedures, radio. everything from knee replacements to facelifts, have been put on hold on as COVID walloped hospitals statewide. But with the COVID pandemic question. dying down, Governor Kathy we Hochul have, um, is lifting the pause in New York, one. but yeah, she's okay. reiterating her stance on ending the school mask mandate. So she says gone, she'll assess the so COVID data again in early March now. before making a decision. Sarah Lee Kessler, WOR News. A new more contagious subvariant of Omicron is spreading around the globe. The BA2 variant is now the top strain of coronavirus in at least 18 uh, countries. Danish scientists report that the new subvariant can reinfect uh, people who've had Omicron before. They also said that they found that BA2 uh, to be 30% more transmissible. Here's your WOR Weather Channel forecast. Temperatures will stay below average on this Saturday with a high of 34 under a partly cloudy sky. It will be clear tonight. Winds will stay light, and the low will drop down to 29. Sunny and warmer tomorrow with a high of 44. And then heading into the last day of February on Monday, sunny but colder behind the front with a high in the mid-30s. I'm meteorologist Jeff Marr. And our next news at 11. Start your day with Len Berman and Michael Riedel in the morning, 6 till 10 weekdays. I'm Paul DeCastro and 710 WOR, an NBC News radio station. Tired of losing money in the stock market roller coaster? Frustrated with the government taxing you into oblivion? Worried about inflation? How do you prepare for so many financial uncertainties? Welcome to the show that will help you develop your game plan. The Financial Quarterback with Josh Jelinski. Josh is a noted financial advisor and president of the Jelinski Advisory Group. And he's here to answer your questions. Call into the show at 800-321-0710. 800-321-0710. Now, let's kick off your financial future. Here's Josh Jelinski. Okay, we're talking about so much what to do with all this market uncertainty, what to do with your tax retirement plans. And first up, we have NASA. Go ahead. 
You're on with Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. And folks, if you have a listener question, you can phone it in at 800-321-0710, or you can follow me on the Clubhouse app at your financial QB is my uh, tag. We're going to go to a lot of questions on military people, Ross, and the like. So first up, NASA, go ahead. All right. So my simple my question is very simple in this kind of a situation of war, when we see the markets crumbling and it might have been governed by Putin or um, you know might be controlled by what decision happens by Biden and the international fraternity. Uh, how, what are we looking at in terms of investments for NFTs and uh, Web3 or Metaverse? Is it the right time or should we wait for some time? Yeah, I don't even know what exactly you mean. I think in the Metaverse, I mean, I, I know what NFTs are, non-fungible tokens. I know what the Metaverse is. I know a lot of their, their I, I would say 99% of those projects are scams and should be avoided. Um no uh, non-fungible tokens, metaverse. Who's going to win in the metaverse? You know, I, I think it's going to be one of those things where Google won in search, Facebook won in social, TikTok is winning in the new social. I think. Well, whose metaverse will people want to hang out in? I guess that's the real question. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is spending billions to make Meta the metaverse that you want to hang out in. So I certainly believe in its potential. But what projects you in or go in, I, I think like buying digital art is not really like smart. That, that rhymes. Buying digital art is not really smart. Now, if you bought it a year ago, if you bought Bored Apes or whatever, you know, a year ago, you're fine. I think the real thing will be Whose metaverse wins? So it's like when you search, you don't go to Ask Jeeves anymore. So I think my tip would be, did you ever hear of Ask Jeeves? Remember that? Yes, I did. You know, there will be Ask Jeeves in the NFT metaverse world, and there will be the Googles of the metaverse world. And I firmly believe the next metaverse, the metaverse that really wins, will be where people want to spend their time. So, you know, where people want to hang out, where people want to search for things, where people want to put augmented reality, virtual reality goggles. Now, Facebook bought Oculus, and they're betting that we're going to, like, wear goggles. I don't know. Ben's young. How old are you, Ben? 20? He's our intern. Do do, do uh, give, give him the mic, Jim. Uh, ben, do you use Oculus Rift goggles, or do people you know, like, hang around with that? Me, personally, I haven't chosen to spend around $300 on a pair of plastic goggles <laughs> to see and get dizzy, but I do have a friend who decided to join in the, the fad. And uh, Do a lot of people do that your age? Is it like a thing? Unfortunately, yeah. It takes away from oh. Applebee's <laughs> appetizers, oh, but I still enjoy my time with them whenever I can. Okay, so your friends are all wearing goggles. Is it, so this is so. This hey, is true. Maybe yeah. So so maybe you know what, true. NASA, you're you're probably on to something. I, I know we're on to something, but it it depends on where these people want to hang out in. And Zuckerberg is betting that because he has the goggle company that people want to hang out there. But Apple, will somebody have the contact lens instead of the? I I actually think it's not going to be a goggle set. I think it will be a contact lens um, where people will put a contact in their eye and they'll be able to size up people. Like They'll do little scans and they'll have augmented reality. So I, I think it's an opportunity. I think it's a, you know, you know, it's, a, it's like the Wild West though. So uh, you can certainly buy individual stocks of companies that are looking into that. Gaming companies, as well as companies in the social space that are trying to take on the metaverse. I hope that helps, NASA. Any other follow-up questions? Terrific. I think uh, uh, what I've taken out is that carry on with the existing shareholding, uh, that's, which is the right way to look at the long term. And maybe, you know, um, I would get the leverage of staying in for long and talking about uh, the new aspects like NFTs or metaverse or uh, Web3 is 
possibly I can wait for some more time. I think that's the, uh, you know, inference that I draw. And thank you so much. Thank you. I also think it's not really, people say, oh, I want to get on this new metaverse project. Like it's going to like blow up. Nine will die. One will rise. One will probably get bought out by a Google or a Facebook and they'll just gobble up their competitors, you know, unless somebody has the chutzpah to stick with it. So, Veronica, you have a question for people in the military. Go ahead. So, yes, I have a friend. Uh, her name's Maggie. She is in the military. Uh, she has both a Roth IRA and a TSP through the military, but hasn't had any time to get her civilian retirement in order, what do y'all recommend? Well, I would say, number one, meet with a financial planner, fiduciary planner. Uh, my number is 888-988-JOSH. We would be happy to give her a free review. Two, max out by like kind of traditional retirement, meaning she's not doing a regular Roth every year, stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I think she should get a... Um, Definitely do a Roth, max out your Roth for you and your spouse. I think that's a great way to grow money tax-free. And it's sort of like what we can control. We cannot control the Russia-Ukraine situation. I stand with Ukraine. I am uh, one quarter Ukrainian in my blood. And I think we need to fight for Ukraine. If we can't fight for the Ukrainians, they gave up their nuclear weapons in 1994. Who can we fight for? And uh, we'll probably be next, and there'll be something horrible that'll happen, uh, God forbid. But we'll see. You know, if we can't give them arms to protect themselves, you know, I don't know uh, which allies can really trust the U.S. anymore. So uh, I stand with the Ukrainian people. I am one quarter Ukrainian, and uh, will will always voice my opinion, even if it's not popular. Ukrainian people are very nice, and um, it's it's a nice hodgepodge. You got Catholics, you have Jews, you have Orthodox, and they live together peaceably uh, until now. So it's a horrible place. You have Christians, um, non-denominational Christians as well. So it, it's just a, a tragedy, and I, I will give my address on what to do with the markets and why you shouldn't freak out. Uh, although the markets could go worse from here. But yeah, in terms of traditional retirement planning, as a military personnel, you have a ton of different options where you can buy back certain things, you can add more, you get special benefits on service pay. Um, so we can help you with all the military benefits as well as all the traditional benefits because there should be a blocking and tackling when it comes to retirement planning, meaning... If you do not have term insurance equal to 20 times your salary and you're in the military and you die and you leave your, your, your wife stranded or your, your wife and you leave your husband with four kids and, and no, one, no one to help, uh, you know, I've seen too many GoFundMe pages lately from people. And the most GoFundMe I've ever seen raised was like 50 grand for a widow. 50 grand is wonderful. That's not going to get you that far. Get you maybe a year, and it's a wonderful thing to do. I don't even like GoFundMe. I don't trust it, but, you know, that's how people give to widows whose husbands didn't buy them enough life insurance or to widowers whose wives did not buy them enough life insurance. So there is traditional retirement planning, have enough life insurance, have enough disability insurance of two-thirds your income, have an emergency fund, have car insurance, home insurance, equal to the amount that you would want after the the uh, the event so all of those things need to be done before you save for retirement and then you know sort of like monopoly do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars if you don't have car insurance home insurance disability insurance life insurance a will you shouldn't do anything in a retirement plan because your family's screwed if you die or get disabled I mean, my father got disabled when he was 40. We were destitute until I brought our family up out of poverty. So it took, you know, 25 years to do that. So you don't want to, you know, 
have to rely on your kids to be a financial genius. You know, it's like, you know, uh, some some of you, you know, have good kids. You also don't want to have your kid to have all that pressure. A lot of pressure growing up. Uh, but I I love I love doing it. I loved uh, building my company. I love being uh, financially relied upon by my parents. But most people can't handle it. A lot of stress. So. And my beautiful parents are now with the Lord. So I miss them very much. Uh, next up, we have Tom. Go ahead. You have a question for Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Go ahead. Yeah, Josh, I have a couple of questions. My first one is a family member of mine. is They're older. They're in their 80s. And they were thinking about doing a reverse mortgage. And I and I and what I've heard in the past about reverse mortgages, you know, it sounded like, okay. But then I recently heard a couple of people just poo-poo them all can. So I was curious. What you thought about reverse mortgages? Were they a good thing or a bad thing? Or there was a guy who we had on the radio show. He wrote wrote a, a book on reverse mortgages called Housing Wealth. I'll give that book to you or any of our listeners free if you schedule a no obligation review at eight 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 nine eight eight Josh. It's a good book on a wide array of topics surrounding reverse reverse mortgages. My first question is: Does the person who need a reverse mortgage? have another way to get the money or is the house the la- their last dollar well they're, they're both on social security and, and uh i think uh, he has uh, a couple of small pensions okay but it's, i don't know how big they are you know but they're, apparently they're fairly small and the only other thing would be the children uh which is my wife is one of them would you know maybe loan them some money you know or you know because i think they were thinking about doing like a hundred thousand dollars on a reverse mortgage the house is worth way more than that i think but okay uh, so, so I, let's I, break this I, I down Are, is your I'm wife sorry? the sole heir no no she has two siblings the benef- the negative of a fight if there's a loan amongst family members if there's an inheritance could be high so if you right, I, I thought that do issue a loan. It could be written down, you know. You want to make sure there is a or... legitimate legal agreement that you could attach to the estate. And you would want the agreement on the heirs that if mom passes, the value of the estate would be reduced by the loan. If you do not get agreement in writing now, then that would be a good reason to do a reverse mortgage. Because then you don't want to fight. You know, it'll just be less of an inheritance. What are the negatives of reverse mortgage? Number one, don't listen to any idiot who tells you that something's usually all good or all bad. Reverse mortgages are a tool. Some are good, some are bad. What are the negatives? Generally, they have high internal fees. I see around ten grand. So if the house is worth three hundred thousand and your mother-in-law dies after having spent 100000 of equity, there will be interest charges and fees that might eat up some of the principal. So a promissory note, which is what your idea was, could be a valid strategy. Uh, The negative would be family agreement, family dispute. The benefit of reverse mortgage is it's clean, it's easy, if everything passes a third, a third, a third, and you just lose about 10 grand typically in fees. Now you also lose interest. So every year your mother-in-law lives, think about reducing that equity by about four to 5%, depending on what the reverse mortgage costs in interest rates. So that's one negative, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I mean, if that's all you have is social security and a house and your kids aren't willing to give you money, well, you might have to do a reverse mortgage. Like, So do I love reverse mortgages? No. Negative fees and interest. But does everybody have a great son-in-law like you, Tom, who's willing to do a loan to your mother-in-law? Probably not. You know what I mean? So I like your idea of a promissory note better than a reverse mortgage because it's probably less fees and taxes. But you've got to get that in writing, legal document. You've got to get all the siblings agree because when people die, things get crazy. So that's how uh, I'll end that segment. Do you have any other follow-up questions, Tom? Uh, yeah, I was, I was curious. If, if somebody was sitting on, say, like $400,000 cash, what would be the best, and they would say maybe a few years away from retirement, uh, no pension, uh, 
they have a maybe a couple of small IRAs. What would, what what do you think would be the best bet for that that 400k? Being that they're so so uh, close to retirement and the stock market, you know, I, I worry about you know, I mean, with all the uh, quantitative easing that you know, some people I listen to, you talk they talk about young know, market crashes. Yeah, the whole that. world's going to hell. So we'll be back right, after right. these messages with Tom talking about what to do with 400 grand when the world's going to hell. And um, what is the next, and I'll be giving some color historically, I've surveyed the last, I don't know, 25 conflicts, and I will break down how much the market went down in each of those conflicts when we return and hopefully uh, give you some tips, Tom. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Are you worried about the recent coronavirus crisis? Nobody has a dial anymore, but it's a cool thing to say. Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Does Jelinski, anybody the here on stage have a dial? You to join me for my and a uh, hot welcome to the stage. To Tom during uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing my live webinar. radio show for 40 minutes and keep on iHeartMedia, and then um, and then uh, we'll do a normal clubhouse room. Call us right now. Tell, tell this guy to go Josh all in on Bitcoin, Josh. There's never been a better time to get. A second My compliance on your department wealth than right now. Eight 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 nine eight eight Josh. We're not allowed that. Eight nine eight eight five six seven four. And go to my website retirementreality.com. Hey, do you want do you want to be interviewed, Otto? Free investment uh, profile. Uh, sure, and we'll I would be. Yeah, I don't care. You, you can give gifts. a Bitcoin eight 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 update. Eight Josh. Call Josh Jelinski, host I'm of the York popular York. financial well. quarterback radio program. I want to visit eight 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 nine eight eight Josh. Josh Jelinski, the financial I think Jennifer wanted to say something. Jennifer. Financial times, okay, Jennifer, we'll go to Tom, who's the if listener, within the next then Jennifer, minutes, then Hoddle. We will offer our complimentary bear market survival guide, which will detail steps so to help folks, you plan. For those of you just joining us, I am doing my live New York radio show for the next 39 minutes. Then we're going to go do a live normal clubhouse room. Economic climate. So it's a little more structured than a normal clubhouse room where people just game plan for yell at each other about each Ukraine, eight Russia, eight 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 and pretend eight they're interests, eight eight uh, they're experts eight eight in geopolitics. Five, six, seven, four, <laughs> for your bear market You're absolutely right. Call One Josh Jelinski, host of the popular you. financial quarterback radio program, 888-988-JUSH, 888-988-JUSH. a minute or so, and they're just laughing it away to glory. They just have to... Okay, well, we're drama. back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. And Tom, uh, we, we, got a, we got a really cool lineup, folks. We have American Hoddle, famous YouTuber and Bitcoiner. It's going to give us a Bitcoin update. Bitcoin uh, crashed from its uh, high earlier in November. He's going to give his take on the Bitcoin community and also uh, innovations in Bitcoin. We have Jennifer as a question, who's in biotech from Boston. And then Tom, who's a normal guy, wants to know, how many years are you away from retirement, Tom? Well, it's not me. It's my wife. Okay. And, uh, she's about three years worth. Uh, I'm retired, actually. Okay. And I have a pension. So your I'm wife retired. is your retirement plan? <laughs> no, no, I have a pension. No, I know. It's fun. No, your doesn't. wife is still working while you're retired, so she's your retirement oh, plan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's my supplemental income. Yeah. So, no, but I, you know, no, we're fine. She's about 400000 I mean, the best tip I have is... The best plan is the one you don't vomit out when the market is down. So as we've learned with anything, March 2020 showed us the market could go irrationally lower. I've surveyed, and I'm going to give the data later after we go to some of our guests, but basically the average drawdown in a conflict like the Russia-Ukraine one has been no greater than about 20%. And the worst one was about 20%. It was Pearl Harbor, 1941, in the market. So typically, it's a function of buy the rumor, sell the news. So it looks like that happened this week. The market's rebounded. Now, I do believe we'll have weakness in March and April as there's anxiety around the March 15 minutes. I actually think what the Fed does is probably going to be more impactful in the markets than – the Russia-Ukraine thing, which basically will be reduced to some regional conflict. Uh, you know, NATO will, will start lining up people all around. They'll let Russia have its way with Ukraine. There will be some truce. 
uh, Putin will get his base and establish, uh, you know, his grounds to get back Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. But, for you know, he'll make it like, oh, we just wanted the Ukrainian people back. You know, it's like, well, you're, you're screwing 44 million people. It's absurd what's happening. It's humanitarian travesty. But uh, Biden will not want to have a quagmire into the November 2022 election. Um, you know, it's funny how uh, a few weeks ago you had to wear a mask when you went to ShopRite. Now, uh, you know, I heard Stacey Abrams on Yahoo Finance. She said the pandemic is no longer. It's now endemic. And now we're talking about war. It's very coincidental. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. So I'm not really going to get into those, but it's it's uh, pretty interesting. As it relates to retirement, what is your wife's risk tolerance? Number one, what is her time horizon? If she is not planning on holding the money for 10 years, she probably should not have it in the market. So she has to commit to long term. Now, there are other more conservative things that she could look at. Uh, she could look at a conservative asset allocation. We have things that we look at for a minimum drawdown, things that uh, withstood the March 2020 COVID crash. Could we have a, a March 2022 redo of COVID uh, March? I guess we could. Um, we shall see. So, Tom, uh, give us a call, 888 josh I'd love to help you. My big tip is the letter P, S, and G. Protect your money, save for the future, and grow it. So we're going to go to Jennifer and then Hoddle. Go ahead, Jennifer. You're on with Josh Chilinski, the financial quarterback. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Hi, Josh. This is Jennifer. Thanks for the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, so one of my questions is uh, we were kind of talking about this the other day around the biotech sector and how it's been really suffering um, over the past year or so. I'm wondering if you have any insight into um, some of these stocks, particularly in biotech and pharma. Thanks. I think some of them are at record buying opportunities. You know, I mean, I would say this. Could they go down? Not, I mean, we, there were some places in the biotech space, what you would call the Kathy Wood stocks. They're down like 75%. 90% in some cases, but people are still on their Peloton bikes. People are still, you know, taking the, the, the vaccines. Um, there are new innovations in pharma, biotech. I think you got to look for the big movers. Amazon, I like in the period that we're seeing in the market now to the period when Amazon went from 100 bucks to 10. So there will be a lot of these companies that are in emerging technologies Geno, uh, genomics, gene editing, well, you know, like we talked about earlier, um, you know, basically the whole new space, but there will be a dominant one. You want to be in the Google and not the Ask Jeeves. You want to be in the Facebook, not the MySpace. You want to be in the, you know, Amazon, not the Pets.com. That sounds kind of cliche, but you got to think about what will be the dominant player in that space there's usually one alpha dog so think chips for so many years intel was a way better deal than amd now once uh somebody starts moving or you could pick the number two player you know if you look at chips intel's lagged and amd's grown but that's a recent phenomenon but i look for companies that are world dominating companies in their space that generally buy up their competition I mean, people forget this. Yahoo was like Google, you know, in the 90s. And they even had broadcast.com. So they had YouTube before YouTube was big. They had Spotify before it was big. They had some like music cast thing. They were just a little early. So you want to make sure you're not, you're not in that company. That's too early. Now you could base, um, I mean, you look at stocks like Broadcom, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, all those are kind of in these emerging spaces, but we'll see, you know, I think 5G may turn into like the next uh, cancer causing cigarettes where you're going to have a label on your cell phone. Do not use this may cause cancer. Are those companies going to be the next Philip Morris? But we'll see. I think it's an important focus on diversification and diversification is not, you know, the average financial advisor says it's like 
you know, have a bunch of different, you know, garbage stocks or garbage funds. I need diversifying strategies, trading strategies, so that you're hedged a bit. And our next guest is American Hoddle, uh, famed YouTuber, former producer. And uh, so, Hoddle, what's your take uh, as, as probably one of the, the biggest experts in Bitcoin in the country? Uh, what's your take on Bitcoin in a minute? And then we'll go to a short break, and then we'll be back on with American Hoddle. So give us a 60-minute review, 60-second review of Bitcoin before we go to the break. Yeah, absolutely, Josh. I think uh, you're seeing Bitcoin, you know, act as risk on with the rest of the market. And when the Ukrainian invasion happened, uh, Bitcoin went down to about 34,000, quickly rebounded and found its footing. And we're sitting around 39 right now. What's interesting is that you're starting to see Bitcoin uh, get out there in the world. Like, for instance, right now it's on both sides of the Russia conflict. Uh, people are sending donations to the Ukrainian military to help the resistance and the war effort. Uh, Russia is also thinking about using Bitcoin for sanctions. You had the Canadian trucker protests, and however you feel about it politically, the truckers were uh, deplatformed by GoFundMe and other payment service providers, and people were able to use Bitcoin to route around. So whatever your political affiliation is, uh, Bitcoin is becoming uh, you know, the force du jour to get around sanctions, restrictions, and to be able to do what you want with your money. That's a great 60-second thing, so we'll be back with more. In the next segment with American Hoddle, again, I'm not making any recommendations or endorsing you put your money in anything. This is Josh Chalinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. It's always on your mind. Retirement, whether you're 55 or 35. Not everyone wants we'll be to back work for Clubhouse you, and in, most would like a comfortable know, a retirement. Or two. You may already have Hoddle. a plan. 40 seconds. But is it the right one? Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback radio program, is ready to guide you towards financial freedom. He challenges the ways your parents and grandparents save money with fresh strategies, which are exactly what you need to navigate today's volatile Otto, economic we, we climate. Like Josh's new book, Retirement like Reality Lessons Check, is intern, available to right? order on Amazon. It's an easy <laughs> read that guides you totally. through a system for securing like your financial you freedom, including you tax saving strategies, understanding the right investment yeah, rates, and more. Yeah, order now. Totally. Retirement Reality Check. Call Josh at 888 Josh. Let Josh so help you map out your retirement using fresh strategies. Hoddle. Call we'll 888-988-5674. Okay, we're back with American Hoddle, Bitcoin expert. Interesting thing about Bitcoin, I've noticed lately, I watch it technically every day, it seems to be a few hours ahead of the market now. So we saw that rebound. We talked on Wednesday, Hoddle, and I said, hey, a good bullish sign for Bitcoin was it did not break the early January lows. What was that? I think, what, like 33? And I think Wednesday, after all the carnage with Russia and Ukraine, we were only down, what, 34, 35? So I'm seeing Bitcoin as a very odd indicator. It's like a six-hour leading indicator on the market now. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, Josh. This is one of the knocks people have against Bitcoin. They go, oh, if I buy Bitcoin, how am I supposed to get it out? And what I think they don't realize is that this is a trillion-dollar asset class, and it's a globally liquid asset class that trades 24-7, 365. There's a lot of good information in the markets. And when the Bitcoin market is telling you something, uh, the traditional markets are soon to follow. It's definitely a leading indicator. So – what else? I mean, I like, you know, your name for people who don't know is American HODL. HODL stands on, stands for hold on for dear life. How'd you come up with that? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's just HODLing is sort of a mentality. You know, it's, we've taken the, the Warren Buffett uh, buy and hold value investor approach, and we've sort of memed it to be, you know, just one simple catchy word, which is HODL. It has a whole long backstory in the Internet. A guy was drunk. He misspelled it. He was upset about his trades. We all took it and ran with it, and that's where we sit today. And how do you get the American hodl? I think you were telling me it has something to do with American Gothic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I really love the painting American Gothic. For a long time, I used it as my profile picture online. So what else? Uh, give us another update. You gave us a 60 seconds. Uh, now give us uh, – 
you know, a little few minutes discourse on Bitcoin. Sure. Yeah, I think I think that Bitcoin has a place in every investor's portfolio. You know, some somebody like me who's younger has a high risk tolerance. You know, I tend to be more heavily weighted in Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin gives you protection from political uncertainty. Uh, there, there's still a tremendous amount of price appreciation to go in Bitcoin. Sometimes I talk to people and they say, well, Bitcoin's at $40,000. I mean, how much higher can it possibly go? And I think when you look at the, the global monetary regimes and the fact that Bitcoin has a programmatic monetary policy that can't be debased, and we're seeing all of our savings be consistently debased, uh, really the sky is the limit in terms of valuation. Could Bitcoin be a $100 trillion market cap? Uh, with within let's say eight to ten years, I think the answer is yes. Some people would tell you I'm crazy for thinking that, but I think there's good justification to believe that. So I think if you're an investor and you're looking at this, a lot of it's going to depend on your your position sizing is going to depend on your age, right? Like uh, the the prior caller Tom, who I, I believe was you know approaching retirement age or at retirement age, uh, you know maybe he's going to put in one percent of his investment portfolio just as a hedge, right? And I think, you know, Bitcoin is acting sort of like the new gold. So if you have sympathies to gold as an investor, uh, you know, Bitcoin is is better than gold in a lot of ways. It's not better than gold in the event of like a nuclear strike, right? You probably want to have gold in that scenario. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, Bitcoin is a lot better in a lot of these, you know, sort of hybrid war scenarios that we're seeing play out where you got cyber and sanctions and economic. And I don't know if the world can, you know, I think the game theory sort of precludes going to full out nuclear war or even, you know, smash mouth warfare between superpowers. I don't think we're going to see that anymore. We're going to see the sort of low intensity, uh, you know, low grade conflict that's uh, informational in nature. And Bitcoin is a strong hedge against those forces. And we're seeing a lot more of that in the world. So I, if you're worried about these kinds of things, definitely it's a good hedge. And if you just want to speculate, I think there's a lot of price appreciation left to go. So what about you mentioned the Russia-Ukraine connection. Can you uh, give that a little more color? I think that was an interesting insight. Totally. Yeah, I I think it just proves the usefulness of Bitcoin, Josh, is that uh, the Ukrainian military has been taking donations in Bitcoin and people are actively people from all over the world are actively funding the resistance effort because they side with Ukraine in the conflict. As we can clearly see. Russia is the aggressor in this conflict, and they have no right to do what they're doing over in Ukraine. Uh, and then on the other side, you got the U.S. and NATO imposing strict sanctions on Russia. Uh, and, you know, they're, they haven't kicked them entirely off of the SWIFT network, but I think any day they're set to do that. And when they do that, Russia has two options. They can either backdoor through China or they can use Bitcoin, right? Uh, so I think that we're going to see Bitcoin on both sides of the conflict. And to me, that just proves how useful Bitcoin is to everybody. So how can – break that down. So how is Russia – okay, what do they have, like $30 billion in the SWIFT network? How are they going to offload that? So I think, I think the international community probably needs to seize that like today or else right. it's going to be piped into Bitcoin. How do they do that? How do they transfer it? Well, Russia already has mining operations going on in Russia. Uh, I was talking to a friend who has a mining operation in Russia. He's worried about it being nationalized by the Russian government during wartime, right, which you could easily see happening. Uh, You can take a hold of these mining operations. You know, for anybody who doesn't know, a Bitcoin mining operation, it's just a, a series of complicated computers that all perform hashing algorithms. These hashing algorithms secure the Bitcoin network. And uh, as a reward for securing the network, the miners, a.k.a. the computers running the system, uh, are rewarded in Bitcoin, right? So there's a pipeline for them to get Bitcoin right there. You know, they can also go through China. There's other ways for them to get their hands on it. And we're not, we're not quite sure if they already have a strategic reserve of Bitcoin uh, somewhere over there in Russia. Oh, fascinating. So for people who don't understand what hashing is, do you want to clarify that? Yeah, think about it like hashing is a very specific computer algorithm um, that the Bitcoin network uses to generate security so that it becomes very difficult for people to attack Bitcoin. Bitcoin uh, has been operational for uh, 13 years now, and it has never been hacked. And the reason it's never been hacked is because it is securitized by uh, a large amount of uh, computer power uh, that keeps it safe. Something like, what, 60,000 people? Something like that, 60,000 miners. How many thousands of miners are there? 
Yeah, est estimates range. It's very uh, difficult to get a, a handle on how many miners there are. Uh, but there's, you know, somewhere between 10 and 100,000 mining operations around the world. And, um, you know, they're, they're geographically uh, dispersed. Uh, we have actually China by, uh, banned mining, and America did an incredibly smart move by welcoming miners here to places like North Dakota, Wyoming, Texas. And so we have a big Bitcoin mining industry in North America, and we're, we're approaching on closing on 50% of the hash rate. So Bitcoin's an American industry. It's freedom money. And, uh, yeah. So that's an encouraging thought. Uh, any other, uh, before we end this segment, what, what other thoughts on Bitcoin's future do you have as it's becoming more viable, more respected by institutions, stuff like that? Yeah, I think that, you know, Fidelity put out a report that said that Bitcoin was going to be worth $100 million a coin, Josh, by 2035, okay? So, you know, I don't know if I believe what Fidelity believes, but the fact that smart people over there at Fidelity believe that gives me a lot of hope and promise for the future. And so I think that we are going into a seven-figure Bitcoin category by the end of the decade. Now, there's going to be a lot of volatility on the way there, a lot of political turmoil, a lot of uh, smear campaigns in the mainstream media, lots of stuff like that. But they can't stop this thing. They know they can't stop this thing. And people are jockeying for position to be the leaders in the next monetary technology, which is Bitcoin. Well, thank you, American HODL. Anything, uh, you're on YouTube at American HODL, H-O-D-L. Uh, any other websites or things you want to plug? Uh, no, yeah, just uh, I, I would recommend anybody who wants to get their hands on some Bitcoin just download Cash App. It's really easy. Uh, that's the app that I use. Cash App is owned by Square. They're very well capitalized. And just set a daily recurring buy. Five bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks. Just get some skin in the game. Yeah, don't don't put your whole life savings in it. You know, just, just start small if you want to start. Now, we're not providing any advice over the air. If you want a specific review for your situation, please call us. If you're no obligation review at 888-988-JOSH. 888-988-JOSH. We'll be back after these messages as I talk about the average decline in the stock market in a war when we return. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, taking your calls all hour at 800-321-0710. Or if you're on Clubhouse, just message me your question and I will bring you up and you get to ask me any financial question you have. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Hey. Meet you out on the first tee? Yeah, I'll be right there. Just reading this article. On what? New bill Congress passed. Looks like it's going to affect the value job? of all retirement Good. savings. Good job, Hoddle. My financial guy didn't tell me about this when I saw him the other day. Well, my guy very did. professional. And we made a plan. You may have heard oh, of Josh yeah, Zielinski. Josh Zielinski is I just your don't guy. have to Listen, be much. if you're 10 yeah. years or less from retirement, which I am, it's Josh great. will give you a free economic plan, Hello, which includes uh, retirement planning, here. a 27 point any, checklist um, to make sure your income Twitter, lasts as long Instagram as you live. He'll even help you navigate the current tax code. Uh, I used I'm to be on Twitter, but I'm pretty much cool. just on Clubhouse first, nowadays. So you can golf? find me on Clubhouse like almost most days. Host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program for your free economic plan. 888-988-JOSH. 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 Okay, so when we come back, we're going to talk about the war and any and financial questions you have. Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Jelinski, the financial Interesting quarterback, stat. inviting you to join me um, for and my this would actually go for the Bitcoin market, to too. During turbulent um, markets, market reacts if you schedule anything, similarly to no a war. Um, webinar today um, at 888 article. The great thing to do. Uh, I saw the, Josh, did you read the same thing I read? Which was, right you know, now, by the invasion, basically, the invasion is always the low point in most wars. To get a exactly. Second opinion yeah. On your wealth yeah. than right now. 888-988-JOSH. 888-988-5674. Which I did, by the way. <laughs> and go to my website, I, I knew that intuitively from the check reading it hard. Today and take your free the news is by the, quiz yeah, by, what is it, by, by, you're eligible for free by the gifts. rumor, 888-988-JOSH. Sell the news. Josh Jelinski, host of the popular financial right. quarterback radio program. But in this case, you want to be buying the invasion. Josh. Because the invasion tends to be the bottom. Okay, we're back to give you a little hope in these uncertain times. And Hoddle had a great little thing he just told me before uh, we're going off. Uh, Hoddle, do you want do you want to uh, say your little pithy statement? Oh yeah, sure. I was just saying that uh, you know 
yeah, I, I did the same market, uh, you know, history that Josh did, and you want to buy the invasion. The invasion tends to be the low point in most wars. Exactly. How do we know that? Well, I mean, history does not always repeat, but it does rhyme. The worst drawdown in the last 100 years, besides this one, which is kind of crazy, was Iraq's invasion of, of Kuwait in 1990. The market was down 16.9%. It took 189 days to recover. So it may take time to recover. The Pearl Harbor attack in 1941, the market was down 19.8%. Took 307 days to recover. Folks, I want to be clear here. I barely watch the news, but I watched Fox News this week. I watched MSNBC, CNN, just because I wanted to see what is the average person watching. And I was ready to pull my hair out, vomit, cry, scream. You know, oh, my people. You know, my people haven't been in Ukraine for 100 years. But, you know, I was, I was feeling the tragedy. And it's there. It's very real. I'm more worried, to be honest, about what the Fed does on March 15th than the, the war's effect on the market. How so? I could go to each attack. Iranian general killed in an airstrike in January of 2020. Uh, very, very small blip. It didn't really affect the market. Saudi Aramco drone strike. Market was down 4%. That was in 2019. North Korea missile crisis. Remember Rocket Man? Everybody thought every, uh, everything was going to go down. It only went down 1.5%. These are the S&P 500 numbers. The source is LPL research from January the 6th, 2020. Now, as we know, markets can go irrationally down. Markets are irrational for longer than we realize. But there were some interesting stocks also that did not really go down much in the crash. Berkshire, Becton Dickinson, CVS, um, you know, there's a bunch that the Chevron that kind of held, and it wasn't just oil. It was some other. Uh, there were some stalwarts in this, in this crash, and we're not recommending you buy or sell any of those symbols, over the airwaves. And if you want your own portfolio reviewed because you're freaking out in the markets, give us a call eight 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 nine eight eight Josh. Generally, when you're worried, that's a good time to buy. Buy the dip has become a slogan of late. Um, I'm not forever bullish i'm very worried about the broad-based economic cycles but i don't know if the war is going to cause the the long-awaited crash i think if the fed has a misstep i think if the government mishandles this stuff um you know people's perception of the fed i think actually if, if i was a betting person if if the fed hikes rates 25 basis points March 15th, the markets may rally then. Now, now we personally have done a lot of technical analysis. We do believe the markets will be choppy from now to early April. There may be a pullback, more fears. What, things might get worse in the markets. But generally speaking, I'll, I'll go through more. The Boston Marathon bombing, down 3%. London subway bombing, that didn't even affect. It took four days to recover. The Madrid bombing took 20 days to recover was negative 2.9%. The U.S. terrorist attacks, a negative 4.9%. Iraq's invasion of Kuwait, down 1.1%. So, folks, you got to realize CNBC, Fox News, whatever your media of choice is, MSNBC, CNN, it's designed to rig your fear and greed so you keep watching. I mean, I got a text. Uh, from a dear friend of mine who was so worried about Ukraine. And uh, she had a little one too many drink. Um, <laughs> so don't worry about it, you know. If, if we all get bombed, we're, we're going to see Jesus. So tonight, you know, what can, what can they do? They can take your life. They can't take your soul. And they can't take your freedom. So pray for the Ukrainian people to fight and to win. And call your congressmen. Call your senators. Say, hey, give them missiles, give them, give them weapons, give them Bitcoin. That, that was a great point that Hoddle brought up. The other thing is, so don't let wars derail you from your long-term goals and objectives. And the acronym, hold on for dear life, is a very good one when it comes to the markets as well as 
Bitcoin. If you believed in the markets 10 years ago, do you believe in them today? Do you believe in them five years from now? Do you believe in them 10 years now? from now? I think the stock market is sort of forced to do well because so many people have their 401ks and retirement plan savings in them. So why did Donald Trump spend more money than any president in human history as a supposedly conservative? And I don't want to take you off if you love Trump. Because your 401k was being cut in half. It was becoming a 201k. So the government will do anything it can, and I believe they will buy stocks the next time the market goes down 40%. Which may be this year, maybe next year, nobody knows. But there is so much of our government that is hinged upon the stock market doing well. Tax receipts, 401ks people's retirement plans, will there be turmoil? Will the next crash be, you know, the crash to to really reset the globe? Maybe. I mean, maybe, you know, we will have that global reset and things will go down uh, disgustingly so that you want to vomit. That's why you should follow sound principles. Have emergency funds. Have a little cash dash in your house if There's a cyber war, and it takes out the banks. Could happen, right, for a day or two. But, you know, we'll rebound. Markets do. The story of the stock market is one of business triumphs over politics and shutting out the fear gauge with investing. Too many people are like the sheep or the lemmings falling off of the cliff. Uh, Biden just announced $350 $350 million in military aid for Ukraine uh, from Reuters, 9.47 a.m. Next up, we're going to go to John, who has a question on 1031 exchanges versus capital gains. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Hey, good morning. How are you? I'm waiting patiently. Go ahead. I, I have. All right, so I have a piece of vacant property that I have been gifted by my parents. I am in the process of selling that property now 15 years later. When they I believe it, I will did they have a, die or no? No, they were still alive. Okay. That's a mistake a lot of people make. They gift to their kids when they should just wait till they die because there's a step up in basis. So then your right. basis is their basis plus whatever improvements were made. All right, so it's a piece of vacant land, so there were no improvements. Okay. So your basis is whatever they bought it for. Right. That's why when people say, oh, oh, you should gift to your kids, it's like stupid advice. But anyway. Um, okay. Because you're going to have to pay all the capital gains. Right. Sell. So, which I am in the process of selling. Now, you may want to look at 1031 exchanges to mitigate now, those. You may want to offset the losses now, maybe in the stock market, like if you have any losers to offset the gains. And we can help you do that. Uh, by calling us at 888-988-JOSH. Does the 1031 just defer the capital gains tax? If I were to buy a piece of property, you know, let's say I were to buy a condo with that, the money that I'm getting. Yeah, you would want to speak to a 1031 specialist, and you got to make sure it's a like-kind transaction. You might say land is not like-kind to apartment building, but there's a way to do it. There are 1031 specialists that we can refer you to that will be able to help you with that. So give my office a call, 888-988-JOSH. If you or any of our listeners need help, got to take a final break of the hour. If you have um, another question, we can hold you on until after the break. You were so patient. And then next up, Paul, who wants to know about the S&P 500, uh, we'll be back after these messages. It's always on your mind. And then Clubhouse will be back with your questions in... Six Not everyone minutes, wants to work forever, to show and most on would like a comfortable New retirement. Radio. You may already so you have a plan, but podcast is it the right one? On Spotify, Josh Jelinski, host of the popular Financial Quarterback Radio Program, is ready to, to guide you towards channel. financial freedom. The he financial challenges the ways your parents you like and grandparents you hear, save money with fresh strategies, you know, which are exactly what you need to navigate tips, today's volatile economic climate. Josh's new book, Retirement Reality Check, is available to order on Amazon. It's an easy read that guides you through his system for securing your financial freedom, including tax-saving strategies, Um, understanding the right investment mix, and more. Order now. 
Retirement Reality Check. Call Josh at 888-988-JOSH. Let Josh help you map out your retirement using fresh strategies. Call 888-988-5674. That's 888-988-5674. Okay, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Is John still on or did he drop off? Okay, next, next up, Paul, go ahead. Hi, Josh. How are you? Great, thanks. Uh, good, good. I max out my 401k every year. Um, but I also, you know, invest on the side, and I I invest, I invest in uh, the S&P 500 index fund. Just wanted to uh, get your take on that. Uh, it's just something I do on the side, uh, but I want to do it long term. What's your, what's your view on that? Well, the S&P is the 500 most capitalized companies in the U.S., Depends on how much you have in protection, savings, and growth. Do you have a six to twelve month emergency fund in the bank? Yes, okay. I have. All. I have. Do you have insurance? So if you you die, your spouse isn't destitute. Yes, I do. Okay. Do you have disability insurance equal to two thirds your income? Yes, I do. Do you have car and home insurance at a five hundred thousand dollar liability limit? I believe so. I mean, I have to review the insurance for the cars, but I believe so. Something like that. Yeah, you want to review your protection component. Make sure you have a will. All of those things. Protection first. Then savings. And then, yeah, then you could certainly put money in index funds. I prefer many indexes. So we have an index fund program where we watch the indexes on a regular basis, diversifying in 7 to 12 different uh, low-cost index funds. So that you have a little bit of a hedge in case the S&P experiences a broad decline. So, for example, you know, you might want to have a gold index as a hedge. You might want to have some cash. You may want to have some bond indexes as a hedge. You may want to have some value indexes. Value in this downturn did better than growth for the first time in a while. Value really did well while growth stocks. Maybe you have an energy index, which did well in this hedge. So sometimes people say, oh, put all your money in one index fund. That's the Warren Buffett rule. That's stupid. Not even Warren Buffett does that. Warren Buffett buys uh, numerous uh, good, well-capitalized companies. He buys Heinz because you're, you're never, you know, you're going to buy ketchup even in a recession. He buys Geico because you're cheap. So you're going to go to the, for the cheap car insurance. So um, I would look at maybe something beyond just an index fund. It's a good place to start. And we could help you with that, give you some tips on your portfolio at 888-988-JOSH. Any other questions? Uh, no, that's it. Wonderful. Well, thanks for uh, joining us. Okay, next up, we're going to go to the stage. If you have a, a question on stocks, bonds, annuities, mutual funds, uh, this is interesting. Vietnam War by the invasion, Gulf of Tonkin, Gulf War, U.S. intervention. By the dip, Crimean crisis of 2014, by the invasion, Iraq war, 20, 2003, by the invasion. I'm not saying to do that. Not, you know, here's the thing, too. If the amount of money you have in the stock market is causing your freak out, be in more conservative things. You could do annuities. You could do cash value life insurance. You could increase your cash position. You have a little gold. You have some bonds. You don't need all your money in the stock market. You sleep at night. Your sleep well at night quotient, the swan ability is more important sometimes than what you make. So, folks, call us, 888-988-JOSH, for the free review. 888-988-JOSH, and buy my book, The Retirement Reality Check, 888-988-JOSH. Continue the conversation on Clubhouse. This is Josh. The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelinski okay, Advisory so Group. Clubhouse Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated and, uh, third parties or publications, including five star wealth manager, advisory of the year finalist by senior market advisor, and top of the million dollar round table are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Josh Jelinski or Wealth Quarterback LLC. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available 
available on the Wealth Quarterback website at jelinski.org. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature, is provided for informational purposes only, and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Investment advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback, LLC. WOR and WAXQHD2 New York, an iHeartRadio station. Available everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Number one for music, radio.